Welcome back to Patriot Network TV. I want to talk to you today about the cost of illegal immigration. And I want to point out to you that uh, many of the numbers that I have for you today are based on research that I've done from the Center for Immigration Studies, the Cato Institute, the American Enterprise Institute, the Heritage Foundation, the Center for Immigration Studies. There are a number of different sources. And when I talk to you about a subject like this, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of pages that I could talk about, but I've tried to boil it down into one real quick presentation. I'm going to try to keep this very short because it's very important. A favorite canard of the left in America is to say something along these lines. Well, what if those 20 million, what if those 30 million illegal aliens left tomorrow? You know, they buy clothes, they pay rent, they buy food. Wouldn't that be devastating to the U.S. economy? Short answer is no. And in a recent uh, compilation of data put together by a journalist in uh, uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, writing for the Rocky Mountain News, she uh, put together a real interesting set of statistics. And I want to give you the total, I don't want to tease you with individual numbers, but I want to give you the total number and then I'm going to come back and pick on some individual numbers. The total cost per year, net cost of illegal immigration, as near as she can tell, is $538,300,000,000. Now, how did she get that? Well, if we go to the state of California, we find out that there are 3.5 million illegal aliens that move back if they would move back to Mexico, it would leave an extra $10.2 billion to spend on the overworked school system. Now, where does that 3.5 million illegal alien number come from? It comes from the U.S. Census, okay? They have basically the illegals who have uh, come across the border to have children. And if you go down to the southern border of the state of Arizona, every single small town that used to have a hospital, those hospitals have all closed because Mexican and Central and South American women cross the border nine months and 15 minutes pregnant and they cross the border just in time to give birth to their child. Now they've entered into a criminal conspiracy to violate the law to cross the border with the intent, much like the felony murder rule, they, have in, they intend to violate the law of the border, they, tend to, they intend to violate U.S. sovereignty and they intend to have that kid and then they will bring in La Raza and the legal staff, the race and their legal staff, and they will start using that anchor baby to bring everybody in the family in. Now, when you think about California, bankrupt, Jerry Brown can't get a budget, the Democrats in Sacramento won't give him a budget, they're, you know, pick a number, $80 billion upside down. We can get $10.2 billion just, just by getting rid of the 3.5 million illegal aliens. Now, it would leave the highways cleaner. The highways would be safer. They'd be less congested. Everyone could understand one another as English would become the dominant language again. Los Angeles, the LA Basin, is what's called majority minority. And you can't, you know, it is just like Blade Runner. There is, there is no more English spoken there. It's this bizarre amalgamation of foreign languages. Or as John Wayne would say, why the hell do I have to press one to speak English? Colorado. 500,000 illegal immigrants plus 300,000 kids and the grandchildren, if they move back home, mostly to Mexico, they'd save Colorado an estimated two billion a year. That's the low ball estimate, high ball estimate, seven billion a year. And in addition to the savings for school, we've also got medical, emergency room, the social services, the incarceration costs, the prison costs. Uh, when we look at being in the jail or the prison system, uh, in Arizona, and I have no data that shows me that California or Oregon or any of the other locales are any different, about one third of the felons, and these are violent felons, are Mexican nationals. And it is a huge cost. Okay, so Colorado, $20 million in prison costs and the terror of those 7,300 alien immigrant criminals that have set upon the local citizens. And I, I, I've mentioned this to you before, there are 50 illegal aliens on death row in the United States, basically one per state. Texas executed a horrid murderer who happened to be an illegal alien who had abducted, viciously raped, and then bludgeoned to death and left naked at the edge of the road a 16-year-old girl. And Mr. Obama and Mr. Holder 
wanted to intercede in this case not to hurry this man's execution after 16 years of habeas corpus appeals but to try and add more appeals and prevent the citizens of the great state of Texas from exercising justice which they did. Uh, if you look at the Denver Public Schools they have a 67 percent dropout and flunk rate and the teachers, counselors, and other researchers say that this is primarily because of thousands upon thousands of illegal alien, alien students speaking a total of 41 different languages. There are 200,000 vehicles in the city of Denver that would vanish if all 20 million, 30 million illegals left the country. Denver's 4% unemployment rate would vanish as the working poor would gain jobs and a living wage. Now, in Florida, 1.5 million illegals would return the Sunshine State back to America, the rule of law in the English language. In Chicago, Illinois, 2.1 million illegals would free up hospitals, schools, prisons, highways, making for a safer, cleaner, and more crime-free experience. Again, 50 illegal aliens on death row, serving an average of 16 years. That's 800 years to get justice for the Americans, that, the U.S. citizens that they've murdered. And keep in mind, these people are the basically the 50 illegal aliens who are on death row are the worst of the worst because the average time served for murder in the U.S. prison system is seven years. The average time for rape is three. So when you murder somebody, my favorite bumper sticker, if I would have killed you when I wanted to, I'd be out by now. These are particularly heinous crimes, and they're crimes that are heartbreaking. Uh, Oregon just released an illegal alien who, uh, while driving drunk, hit a young lady and killed her, ran away from the accident, he served 58 months in prison, and he's been released, and more than likely he will kill more U.S. citizens unless he is run out of the country. Uh, if 20 million illegal aliens returned home, the U.S. economy would return to the rule of law. Employers would hire legal American citizens at a living wage. Everyone would pay their, pay their fair share of taxes. Now, it is critically important to understand this. Having a permanent underclass of people who do not speak the language, are not educated, and are a drain on the culture in every way, shape, and form is bad for the culture. And the reason it's been allowed to happen for the last 35, 40 years is you have the contingent from the Chamber of Commerce who wants ch cheap labor, and then you've got the contingent from the Democrat Party who wants a permanent block of suppressed, oppressed voters that will never leave the party. Okay, We'd lose 500,000 illegal criminal alien inmates. Okay, This is roughly $1.6 billion annually. That would include 15,000 MS-13 gang members. And they're distributing basically $130 billion in drugs annually across the country. Rural America has not been spared from the damage done by the MS-13 people. Now, we would have 400,000 fewer anchor babies not born in the United States, another $109 billion. Our cities would see a, an immediate reduction in pollution, in driving, in gridlock, in crime. And for those of you who are absolutely clinging to the carbon footprint, we'd reduce greenhouse gases by 11%. Now, what does this all mean? When you add this all up and you look at it, you're faced with some statistics that are just hard to bear. $14 billion to $22 billion are spent each year on welfare for illegal aliens. That's billion with a B. Uh, $7.5 billion spent each year on Medicaid for illegal aliens. $12 billion each year on primary and secondary school education. $27 billion each year for education for American-born children of illegal aliens. Uh, $3 million per day is spent to incarcerate illegal aliens. $190 billion spent each year on illegal aliens for welfare, social services, etc. by the American taxpayer. $200 billion per year in suppressed American wages caused by the presence of an underclass that will always work for cash, not for social security, and for less. Uh, when you look at this, when you go through this over and over and over again, what you see is a series of policies that cater to the very far right, we just want cheap wages, to the very far left, we want 20, 30 million new voters, but the rest of us, the, the broad middle class, we get stuck with the bill. They send us a bill for 538 billion, 300 million dollars. I am begging you, wake up. The 
current president and current attorney general have no intention of enforcing 8 USC 1304 CD&E and they will fight SB 1070 as long as they can to keep this in place. God bless us all.